going on everyone welcome back to better biomed i have a very interesting situation here um gosh where do i even start with this one um i have a hydroculator a hydrocolator whatever you want to call it and it seems to be leaking to chassis like so much so that i think it's actually dangerous to press the open ground button Let's go ahead and take a look. So this guy right here, this is a um, 2004 <laughs> Chattanooga hydrocolator, hydroculator. It's it's an oldie, right? And it has been rebuilt at least once before, okay? And it is heating up. Don't get me wrong. It is heating up. Um, there was an enormous amount of scale, which I thought... there. The staff has to be putting something in this device to be creating all that scale, right? Well, scale could also be a symptom of electrical leakage. Hear me out. So this device right here, according to the plate, uh, the plate, the plate, the plate, the plate, the plate, the plate, where's the plate? There it is. According to the plate, it says that it is 120 volt, 1500 watt. Well, if you take a look, and in my garage, I'll tell you what, here, let's just go ahead and let's open this guy up. Let's turn this guy on. This is a calibrated instrument. So the first thing I should do probably is check my mains, right? Well, that is a little concerning. <laughs> I was thinking I was at 109 or 108 volts in my garage here but I'm not okay so my polarity is good L2 to ground is 122 hmm well the problem is, is that's the first time I've ever felt this guy warm alright so I use I use my electrical safety meter all the time to help diagnose medical equipment, right? And you can see right here, I've got it plugged in up into this guy. And according to this, it can do 15 amps, one horsepower. So it's got plenty of current carrying capability. And although I do believe this is on a 20 amp circuit, I should be popping a breaker. And I'm probably pretty close to doing that. You can see my lead is just clamped on down here. Let's see. I can move it down, I suppose. Let's move it down to a, another section. Um, I just installed a new power switch, and that was one of my first indicators. As I came over here and I was looking, and the power switch that I installed, you can barely make it out there, it says that it is 16 amps at 250 volts AC. Should have been plenty. Because if this is 1500 watts, that's only like 12.5 amps that it pulls. Now, I did ohm out the heating element, and it did sit at like 9 ohms, which is pretty accurate. So, huh, here's where it gets interesting. It has not been heating up too quickly, which, you know, that happens. It's maybe a little cold in here. Let's go ahead and set that guy back. Okay, it's at 102, not too bad. <clears throat> so the power switch was fried, which was an indicator that it's pulling too many amps. So I kicked it over on this guy, and I just hit the on, and I'm sitting at 14. Now mind you, I just told you that it should be pulling about 12.5. There's no motors on here, so the heating element should be maximum current draw. And I did ohm it out, and it seemed to have been correct. But if it's pulling more amps than what the ohms of the heating element say, there's probably leakage. 14.2. My normal polarity. Ah, let's go ahead and... Let's put it on external, Wait, there we go, external case leakage. And you can see there's some sort of activity there. Normally this is almost completely zero because you have an intact ground loop. 
not ground loop, you have an intact ground system. Well, guys, do you think it's too high? Now it says it's supposed to be microamps. 17. Now that should be low. It should be low. I don't know. This guy is getting pretty warm. I'm going to put it back over. This was at 13. Then it went up to 14. Actually, it was at 12. And then it was at 13. Then it was at 14. And, you know, it, it just seems to be going up. 14.3. It's probably not done. It's probably going to go up some more. Which means that there's got to be some sort of leakage. Because it's pulling more amps than that heating element was measured at. That or when the heating element heats up, it's changing its resistance properties and decreasing its resistance. That's the only thing that really makes sense because the current is going up. No, I'm not getting zapped, thank God. Um, and that's not a crazy high amount of microamps. Now remember, on electrical safety, you know the old school measurement was 300 microamps on a lifted ground. So. I don't know. It's just, it's really aggravating. It's heating up. It seems to be doing its thing. Of course, I'm going to get a second electrical safety meter and I'm going to take other measurements. I don't know, guys. So, this is just one of those things. Um, man, it's drawing a lot of current. It's drawing too much current. You know, if that was plugged into a 15 amp outlet, which it does have a 15 amp plug. It's almost pulling 15 amps right now. That means even if the breaker was almost on the edge of its tolerance, continued use at 14.4 amps is what it's sitting at. That might pop a 15 amp breaker. It seems to be pulling too much. The heating element is obviously suspect. I checked all the electrical connections. The only one that was burned was the power switch. And it was one of the legs in the power switch inside it. I disassembled it. It was arky sparked, so the only thing left is that heating element. I don't know. Just one of those things, guys. <sighs> Use your electrical safety meter. Back up your claims. Measure current with your electrical safety meter. It's the safest way to do it. And you can see right there, it uh, seems to be running a little bit high. So while this machine is working, and I could technically ship it, According to its own data plate, it is not within manufacturer specs, and I have more troubleshooting left to do. So remember guys, just because it appears to be working, is it working to the manufacturer specs? Check the data plate, do the math, check the amount of current that it should be pulling, and if anything, use your electrical safety meter to verify it. Thanks for watching guys.